Hi, this is your professor Tewei Wang. This is a summary of a chapter 7 from Superior and Topi's uh, textbook. Chapter 7 is a soft topic. Uh, the soft topic implies that it is actually about the managerial decision. Uh, it links to IT strategy and a lot of this uh, high level and long term planning. The major keyword for this chapter is the word sourcing. Sourcing means how are we going to be acquired and maintain our software system. And topic including in the sourcing decision include buy or build decision, uh, outsource versus internal uh, staff decision, as well as a lot of uh, IT infrastructure and the organization design topics. From the systems framework's perspective, it is part of the earlier stage of the system development life cycle, but it is also related to the design and implementation of the information system. It does not really involve in the designing, programming, and building of the information system. However, decision made here will have a much long-term impact to the organization IT infrastructure. And decision to be made in here roughly can be classified into three categories. The first one is a more or less given. It's called the environmental issue, or some people call this network uh, infrastructure or IT infrastructure. These existing uh, infrastructure determine a lot of these uh, future decisions we're going to be making. And from the system development uh, perspective, the decision we can actually make is, is include uh, the acquirement of software and uh, the people who are going to be developing or maintaining the software. From the software acquisition perspective, uh, there are probably three, four different sources. The first one, of course, is build in-house. This particular option is no longer uh, most likely option for most of the organization unless you have a very strong, very powerful internal software team. And most of the company will be using a, a, a hybrid approach, using either uh, the combination of licensed software, open source, uh, source software, or some sort of a, a connection that uh, glue all these software together. As I have argued, uh, using a proprietary or building house software is very rare and uh, highly un unlikely. However, there's some situation that the uh, company decide to go for a uh, very highly customized uh, building house type of solution. In earlier day, uh, Dell computer, for example, in order to maintain their supply chain uh, all the way from Asia to the United States, they decided to build their enterprise system in-house. However, due to the cost concern in particular and a high risk of uh, falling behind your competitor uh, building in-house or uh, building a proprietary software by yourself is hardly a, uh, an option for most of the company. The majority of the uh, company we are facing today is pretty much like uh, using some sort of uh, licensing commercial off-the-shelf software directly and uh, combined with some additional add-on software for specialty use. And uh, typically, you will have a company acquire a very big or large infrastructure type of software, uh, such as ERP or CRM or SCM, uh, custom relationship management, supply chain management, uh, that kind of software as a foundation. And based on the uh, industry your business is operating in, you may uh, purchase some sort of a special software for uh, certain operations. For example, the uh, uh, medical industry may acquire some of the special software they use to file insurance and uh, try to communicate with the technician. All these uh, uh, medical record keeping uh, type of software is a sort of add on to a, a traditional enterprise resource planning type of system to work together to become uh, the choice of a special industry. In terms of the delivery mode, and traditionally, of course, that most of the software are installed on premises, and that is that you install in uh, on a server or a set of computer inside your company. 
And uh, when we enter the uh, 21st century, more and more company after 2010 uh, moving their software to the cloud environment. Uh, if not the cloud environment, it will be some sort of a software as a service uh, sort of a re arrangement. Uh, you will have a, uh, a specialized company hosting your software for you instead of buying uh, heavy or expensive equipment, putting your, your own computer lab. And of course, uh, there are exceptions uh, for company try to host their very sensitive data set. For example, a uh, company would choose to use more a uh, on-premises solution. The general trend of uh, software uh, delivery mode is pretty much, uh, regardless of, uh, of what kind of software you're using, all the software are moving to the cloud. As a student, you probably noticed that uh, our uh, Microsoft Office software that we use every day is moving to the, to the cloud. So Office 365 is actually a, a, a semi-cloud-based software. And if you use a very popular um, a cloud storage solution, such as the box that our campus use, or uh, something like the uh, uh, Microsoft OneDrive, and all these solutions are cloud solutions. And the box system combined with the uh, Office plugin, you can easily open the document in the cloud and using Office 365 to work everything on the cloud instead of uh, using your, your own computer. On this particular slide, however, that uh, you have a couple of terminology, uh, may you might want to kind of figure it out uh, what they are. Uh, commercial off-the-shelf service, of course, COTS is one. And you will notice that uh, under the first column of the table, uh, there are two words or two acronyms there. One is LAS, the other one is SAAS. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not LAAS, IAAS. It's called uh, Infrastructure as a Service. And the second one is Software as a Service. The best way to understand IAAS is that uh, you uh, pretty much source the uh, the operation system uh, to the cloud and uh, on the cloud operation system such as our uh, virtual desktop you install your your software on top of it you still run pretty much like you you do in-house but the operation system is in the cloud but when you move to the software as a, a service then you actually ditch the infrastructure altogether and rely on the cloud for everything uh, everything you do and solutions such as uh, Google Workspace it used to be called Google G Suite uh, is one of the example that uh, you log on to a Google environment uh, you don't really know what kind of operating system you are using you just use the software provided by the workspace or G Suite that uh, that for your company and most of the company today outsource their email system uh, to a, uh, a cloud vendor and uh, uh, many schools use actually Gmail as their, their background software. Uh, just we, we just don't know. Uh, sometimes you don't see uh, that you're running a Gmail, but many universities are using Gmail as their foundation or uh, cloud service, email server. Since most of the uh, software used today are, uh, regardless of their on-premises or in a cloud, uh, you are you are going to have uh, an array, uh, an inventory of software uh, to be used. So management of this inventory of software become very important. In the system development environment, there is some terminology uh, you need to know in, uh, to understand the complexity and the job required to manage all these software. Uh, these terminology on the slide here, you can see that the first one is called construction, C-O-N. Second one, uh, very importantly, called change management. And whenever a new version of the software or a new add-on of the software is introduced, you need to deploy it to your, to your environment. It's called the deployment of the system. And you have some kind of software that glued together uh, several separated software system. It's called the glue code. And uh, traditionally, we use uh, some sort of a middleware that we uh, control or listen as inventory so your system can communicate with each other. 
And finally, of course, you have this job of maintenance. Every once in a while, you will see that the IT department will issue this uh, announcement says that on Sunday uh, from uh, 12 a.m. to 6 uh, in the morning, we're going to be shut down the system to do maintenance. All these maintenance, including uh, uh, putting patch on the software, uh, install update, and back up the uh, database and that sort of a thing uh, will be part all part of this uh, software solution management job and when you select the uh, commercial off-the-shelf software you have to consider uh, why you, why are you using uh, most likely it, it is uh, more much more or less like a, a competitive force that uh, force your company to uh, adopt the best practice and use the software to, in order to compete on the marketplace and of course the uh, the cost is an important issue in most of the solution here and this is a pro one of the uh, phenomena you will encounter when you go into a job uh, place or marketplace uh, a particular company usually stick to a particular vendor say for example if you're using IBM solution uh, it will be very hard for your company to switch to uh, Oracle or or Google or some other vendor. Uh, the reason being that the switching cost uh, a lot of time is uh, very high. Other than commercial off-the-shelf software, the other most likely uh, solution here is uh, you're going to be using some sort of open source software. Open source software is different from commercial off-the-shelf. It's different from the uh, building house type of software in a way that uh, open source software also provide package solution. However, uh, the open source software does not provide uh, uh, the strong support that you can anticipate in the, uh, in the commercial off-the-shelf software uh, category. And uh, in the last 20 years or so, uh, at least from my observation, open source software are used mainly in something what we call the peripheral operation in your company. For example, uh, big data and uh, data analytics. And uh, data analytics is uh, a very important function, yes, uh, but it is not an uh, essential function to keep the business running. It is a decision support mechanism. And for say, for example, if you're running Walmart, the software keep your company running are the, the, uh, the transaction processing system that whenever you go to Walmart, you buy something from the point of sale system or inventory management and logistic management system. Those are essential to Walmart. But when you are trying to make the decision of uh, which product to buy and how do you reshelf your uh, retail space, those decisions are, are uh, created using data analytics software, business intelligence or artificial intelligence. And these type of solution are uh, open door to open source software uh, because they are they are peripheral. That's my terminology, and uh, but it, it's also important and essential. And so it's also new. A lot of this uh, commercial available software uh, cannot reach uh, whatever the uh, the software or open source can offer. And in that particular situation, company will adopt uh, open source software. Another typical example of uh, uh, using open source software will be building a uh, e-commerce website. And a lot of companies, when they are running their operation in a traditional day, using a, a, a brick and mortar type of operation, they uh, will develop a website uh, using a hosting company. And these companies will typically use open source software such as uh, Apache and PHP solution and MySQL uh, database, all these together combine to become open source software. And uh, later on, a lot of companies will uh, sort of linking the operation of their e-commerce to their enterprise uh, resource planning system. But uh, since they have adopted the uh, industrial uh, cheap and quick, easy solution from open source environment, uh, it's uh, very easily uh, kind of a blending into your organization at that point in time. And more and more, uh, there are a lot of consulting company and the individual consultant offer services to company uh, so that you can use open source software more or less um, uh, easier and with uh, more reliability and support, uh, most importantly.
and uh, people will call this type of uh, uh, symbiotic uh, relationship between consultant and company uh, as some sort of an ecosystem. So this is the open source ecosystem. You have this Apache camp, you have uh, the uh, NoSQL MongoDB uh, camp, that sort of uh, uh, environment. So again, uh, to summarize the, uh, the software solution, most likely you will encounter a uh, commercial off-the-shelf software as the backbone of the company operation that handle accounting, inventory, human resources, and so on. And then you have a lot of this add-on uh, package software, maybe uh, on the cloud, maybe open source, and uh, you need to somehow integrate them together to make sure your company's operation uh, go more or less smoothly. Uh, this job, however, is a, a big problem. Integration is not an easy job. Uh, you will encounter a lot of time that uh, in terms of uh, inconsistency, in terms of the data quality problem, will all arise when you try to blend all these different type of systems together. Uh, to build a model, to create some sort of a schematic view of the uh, inventory or how you put things together is pretty, pretty useful. And it is recommend as an IT manage manager uh, that uh, a company should have some sort of a, a good documentation of uh, how you manage an inventory or software. And you know, building some, some kind of uh, diagram like this one will be very helpful. And using a uh, flowchart type or some sort of architecture type of diagram, you can see how uh, each one of the uh, software need to be connect and glued together. There are, however, as we have studied in the uh, earlier stage of our uh, semester, there are software that uh, help you to inventory and maintain a, a healthy list of your software inventory. So the example such as IBM uh, doors, rational doors, uh, they, other than keep track of the requirement, they also have a uh, database building to maintain the human resource as well as the software uh, updating maintenance schedule. And maintenance relies on a healthy IT staff or team of the supporter in the company to keep track of everything that is going on and provide uh, the necessary functionality and new development to the, to, the, to the company. So the other important question or topic or decision to make in the uh, IT sourcing problem is how are you going to be sourcing the human resource, IT human resource to maintain your system? And question including uh, of how do you maintain this uh, armies or teams or of IT supporter uh, will be something like uh, who are you going to be hiring? Are you going to be using consulting firm, uh, writing a contract with them? And where will those people be? Uh, their geographical location uh, will become a very important concern in this type of uh, decision. So obviously, uh, you have many options of maintaining these uh, IT staff and people. Uh, more of the traditional companies such as the university that we are uh, in here uh, uh, go for more like a traditional method using salary employee. But more and more that uh, because of the complexity of the job and a lot of the job will be uh, outsourced as well. Uh, say for example at UIS, one of the job of keeping track of the student progress into your academic uh, uh, program as well as tracking your uh, your job and graduation alumni is now, uh, I believe they are outsourced to a company uh, to keep track of everything you do. And uh, the decision of using consulting uh, team or hiring employee, uh, sort of like going back and forth. And most of the company has, again, a very hybrid approach of using uh, their human resource. One of the observations I have as a practitioner in the software industry in the last about you know, 10, 20 years is that um, uh, you, are, you are, uh, notice a very interesting phenomenon that many, many of you may encounter the situation when you go out looking for a job. 
Say, for example, uh, Microsoft, uh, they're a software company developing software, and they need a lot of uh, people working for them. And among uh, the people working for them, uh, you have, of course, full-time employee. But you will also uh, see a lot of people, they call themselves consultant. They work uh, 24 hours uh, in, uh, in 12 months a year in Microsoft campus, but they don't belong to Microsoft. Their, their role is kind of weird because uh, they are doing pretty much the same job as a full-time people, uh, but their uh, employment status is an, an outside consulting firm. This is becoming a, a very typical uh, practice now in, in many IT operations. And uh, uh, these people are supposed to be hired as full-time people. They are hired as consultant because the company want to avoid using or paying the, uh, the benefit to the employee. And so you will see that uh, even though they are calling themselves uh, consultant, they are actually full-time employee. And in a um, typical consulting job, say for example, IBM consulting team or uh, a large software company called uh, EMC Square. And uh, these uh, consulting company, the, every, every once in a while they have a big project to deploy a software in a company. And these people, uh, they uh, form a team uh, and then go into that company. Eventually, at the end, they uh, turn out to become the employee of, the, of their client. And that is also a typical situation as well. So you will see this, um, the, the, the turnover of the IT step is very high because the company is trying to uh, be nimble uh, and, and at the same time and try to maintain a stable force of the, of the IT uh, human resource uh, in that regard. So, um, you know, just give you some example uh, to, to, uh, to help you understand the complexity of the human resource problem in IT management. And in the category of hiring this uh, so-called contractor or consultants, uh, that arises another another problem uh, from 2000 to 2010 in the uh, United States. Uh, that is that you will see a lot of company hiring a consultant from outside of the country. And uh, many of them are uh, off the shore operation. Uh, they will have, they will, they will be located very near the mainland United States, but not on the mainland United States. The benefit of doing that is they don't need to pay their uh, so-called uh, the H-1 um, uh, immigration visa sort of processing, but at the same time, they can uh, near use them nearby. And that sort of uh, operation is, is very common as well in the practice we see today. So other than considering you're hiring a contractor, outsource to the entire project to a consulting firm, uh, or you have the, the hybrid method of uh, full-time employee plus the consultant contractor, as well as the, uh, the outsourcing firm, you also need to consider their physical location, especially if you're running a, uh, a large operation, uh, such as uh, one of our uh, recent students were hired by uh, Lynx. Uh, they have operation in Tennessee, in uh, Nashville, as well as in uh, San Francisco. And uh, uh, so they, you, they need to consider how to manage their, their employee in different geographic location. And with the, uh, the pandemic hitting this year, uh, they also have the problem of uh, their employee spray actually around every corner of the United States uh, to their original homes or try to avoid the cost of uh, uh, renting a, an apartment in the, in the big city. And so uh, managing people in different geographic uh, locations become a, uh, a problem. And newly arise uh, research question that we uh, can observe now is that when everybody is using this remote uh, way of, of working, you can you can imagine that in the future we'll have more and more this type of uh, remote working arrangement and how this will impact our human resource management. Um, I don't have a, a full answer to that particular question, but that become an important concern and how effective you can manage a, a remote team in different location 
uh, maybe will be in a different language uh, they speaking in the future. That will be one of the biggest challenge in the uh, IT sourcing decision. So a couple of terminology on this particular slide. Nearshoring uh, is the offshoring operation that you hire that uh, uh, outside of the country employee, but they are very near your operation. Say, for example, you can uh, set up an operation in Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, they are just about one hour drive from the U.S. border, and uh, you know uh, the human resources are much cheaper there, and uh, they, many of them speak English over there. At least they speak Spanish over there. Uh, so operation over there can be uh, considered near shoring. And of course, traditionally, you heard about the story of United States outsourced software development operation to uh, countries like uh, India, and that would be typically offshoring operation. An example I uh, mentioned earlier, like an IBM consulting firm uh, be hired by their client company, and that, uh, that, that is called a captive unit type of operation. So again, uh, the situation we are facing today in, uh, in terms of IT developing teams or software management team uh, is pretty much like a, a very hybrid geographically distributed uh, system that uh, you encounter a lot of people working together, try to provide the, the service and the maintenance of your software uh, in your operations. It is therefore uh, to, very important to select your partners or vendor uh, who provide you with the most essential operation or software to your operation uh, in your industry category. A recent example of uh, the company uh, ByteDance, uh, their, their famous software app called uh, TikTok, need a partner, U.S. partner, in order to operate in the United States. So they are selecting between Microsoft, Walmart, and Oracle. And uh, look like that Oracle is going to be getting a contract. And you see there are a lot of consideration, including the, uh, the political dynamic, including the fit of the organization, uh, the culture, and uh, their infrastructure of your partner, and uh, the fit between the management style, all these are consideration in picking uh, the final vendor you are selecting. And there are, of course, uh, many different type of uh, vendor you select from. Smaller scale software development team and uh, uh, contracting company. You also have enterprise system level, large company consulting team. All the big name we heard, IBM, Oracle, uh, the uh, EMC and Microsoft, all these are enterprise uh, level third party software vendor. And more and more recently, that, that we have a cloud infrastructure provider. So, Amazon uh, actually get into the picture. There is a recent IPO on the market in 2020 uh, called Snow. And there are typically that this type of a new player in the software contractor uh, environment. And a company like uh, Salesforce uh, is getting bigger and bigger in this uh, final category as well. So to summarize that uh, uh, this particular chapter uh, involved two different uh, sourcing topic or decision. One is how do you get your software application to work in your company? The second is how do you maintain uh, the human resource or the IT team that support the software operation that in your company. So all of these consideration and terminology using in this chapter will be very beneficial for you to, uh, to use in your future work environment or current work environment. And that will be the, the summary of chapter seven.